Alright, hey guys, it's uh, Leontes from Serling Games alongside LK404. Hey, LK404 again. And we promised you guys some Blue vs. Black, uh, so here it is. Uh, we just recently got back from Game Empire in Pasadena, uh, and we played a couple games. And uh, on the left, we have Clan Natoy, uh, one of the patrons, uh, ambassadors for Fantasy Strike and uh, Codex Playtester. Um, and that's me on the right with the blue Codex. I'm um, going to play some Black vs. Blue. That's. Uh, Black Hand Scourge versus Flagstone Dominion. Yep, and uh, I'm expecting to. I'm definitely expecting to see lots of skeletons. Uh, Clan Natoy is kind of well known for loving his token decks, and so yep, probably see lots of skeleton tokens. Yeah, he was telling me that he he liked white in Magic the Gathering because he likes playing little token guys and and uh, buffing them up, and it seems that. Uh, Black does that in this game, and that's where he sort of migrated to Necromancy. A lot of times, too, uh, this match has been historically tough for Blue. In the early game, a lot of uh, demon oppression, but he's going to do a different strategy. And I think um, a few recent changes to, to playstyle and methodology, Blue's had a much easier time in the early game against Black, just with some new tech that we've discovered. So, so we're going to flip the, uh, the the old panda coin to find out who goes first. Kind of toy uh, investigating whether or not it's a fair coin. <laughs> if, it's, uh, if it's gonna flip uh, heads or tails based on the weight, I don't. I don't think it's really a coin for flipping. It it, it flies through the air. I think it's fine. I, I think I do a horrible job flipping it because it's so damn heavy. Yeah, we got to teach you how to flip coins. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, so the heroes for blue are uh, Onimaru, Quince, and Big B Hayes, who's a new character in the Fantasy Strike universe. And Black has all new characters. All new characters. Unless you count Vandy as a as a character in the background of the Yomi universe. Apparently. Uh, Vendetta is one of her personal spies, but she's the queen of demons. Um, the other heroes being Orpal, who is the disease hero, spreads minus one, minus one runes. And then we have Garth, who is the necromancy hero, who can uh, resurrect units out of your discard and make skeleton tokens. Yeah, so I, I kind of expect to see Garth against Clan here. So I forget what he called, but I think, I think he ends up going first. Yeah, I have the five on there. All right. So let's see how what Black's opening is. I think he does a pretty standard uh, Garth Haunt Skeleton Worker opening. So Garth uh, has an ability on his top band that he can pay one gold to summon a skeleton once per turn. Pestering Haunt. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, Skeleton. Uh, no, he, he, changes, he changes it. Okay. I remember he changes it. Pretty sure. He makes... Yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a really good opening. So Pestering Haunt costs zero, and it's this little 1-1 one, one attacker that's unstoppable... So it's really annoying. It just it just pings things constantly. It can't be sacrificed. And it's also not a blocker. It can't patrol. It can't patrol. So so the opening there with four gold is play Garth for two, play a worker for one, use Garth's ability to summon a skeleton, and then put the pestering hunt out for free. And then he discards three cards to draw five. And uh, the... And the continuing thread of no really guys give us tokens. Oh yeah, there's a little uh, <laughs> little die there. So I bring out yeah. Onimaru. Onimaru is a is a two three hero at top, and uh, he also has frenzy one. So if he actually does swing, he deals three damage. He deals three, and he's just really really good there. Onimaru is a great combat hero. And the unit I put in squad lead is called Traffic Director. It's a it's a one cost one one. It's a really great card for that reason, but it's also untargetable. So a lot a lot of black stuff is uh you know single target nukes and, and and sacrifice stuff but i'm able to negate a card called deteriorate which will probably see be used to great effect later in the game zero cost gives a unit minus one minus one so he'd be able to play a spell to kill it except it's untargetable it's untargetable yeah yeah and uh so i put him in the squad lead it also has an ability where it's unstoppable when it targets a building and there's some synergy with the peace line of stuff that can target damage buildings um so it's a decent card. So Clan's doing some, some so hand shuffling here. So we have here. Worker. What do we got? Worker, Tech 1, probably happening. Um, yeah, he's trying, to, <laughs> he's, he's trying to figure out how to get through Traffic Director because I'm sure he wants to deteriorate it right now and he can't. And he's upset about it. So Graveyard. Plays, graveyard. All right, so Graveyard is a pretty interesting building. If a unit dies, it goes to Graveyard, like you see Pestering Haunt go there now. And next turn, he can just exhaust Graveyard and play Pestering Haunt from the Graveyard. Um, oh, the skeleton runs into... So he into, trades yeah. Haunt and Skeleton for... Uh, yeah, the skeleton token was the 1-1, one, one, so yeah. he so gets through the squad lead armor there. And then he pays 1 to make another skeleton. Yep. And puts that in the squad lead, so that's a 1-2 with the armor point. Oh, that's scary. If you uh, So, blue starting deck has a card called Arrest that can uh, disable a uh, any patroller, and so... If uh, Oni can arrest the skeleton, he can take out uh, Garth and only take 1 damage on Onimaru. Yep. Yeah. So he's deciding... Oh, is he changing? 
Yeah. Oh, he forgot oh. to make his tech one, so now he knows he can't get a. Uh, he can't get that skeleton that was the one gold from from Garth. But okay. yeah, he needed to make a tech one for sure, for sure. Okay, so. So this is this is actually a better play though because now you need one extra damage to be yes. able to uh, to kill. Right, so I play a card called Reputable Newsman, and then I put the, the two gold on there just to help us figure out what what it's on. Reputable Newsman says that you can't play spells or upgrades that cost whatever you claim when you play it. So I choose two because Black has a lot of good stuff at two. It's got Sacrifice the Weak, um, which is a thing where both players sacrifice their weakest unit. Uh, Soulstone is a thing that he may not use this game. I think, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I went for the YOLO play here. I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to play that. I'm going to play... Uh, oh, you do mid-band? I, yeah, I put Oni to mid-band to make him a 3-4, a, uh, and he attacks and kills Garth because with the Frenzy 1, he attacks for 4 damage and kills the hero in the squad lead. And at mid-band, he gets readiness, so he should be untapped. Yeah. Or, yeah, he's ready. Yep, so then I gain, I go to level 7, and then I pay 1 gold to max Onimaru out. His max band is immediately summon three one one soldiers with spark shot so i just clunk up my whole board with lots of little one ones and they all have spark shot and that ability was if you attack a patroller you get to deal one damage to an adjacent guy so because i know he's doing the skeleton strat i'm gonna max out my onimaru quickly get these little spark shot guys and make it really tough for him to do patrol zone math and i have a huge advantage right now um and i'm still at five cards because i didn't spend any cards that turn i just threw all my gold into my hero Oh man, I can't see. Is he getting? Uh, is he getting Doom Grasp? <laughs> I think so. Probably Doom Grasp is a, uh, a Garth spell. That's the hero I just killed, um, and it's it allows oh, you to yeah. It's four two, gold. Four gold kills a any basically non tech three unit or hero. Yeah, you have to sacrifice a unit, and if yep. you do, you get to kill a hero straight up. It's one of the only hard hero removal spells in the game. So he's in trouble now. Um, he he taps the graveyard to put the haunt into play, and what's kind of neat is that. It's a uh, zero cost card, so it's really easy to use graveyard with. He plays summon skeletons, which is a, a three gold ability, which creates two more skeletons. Yep, pretty simple. So he's just gonna block up, and he has to worry about the spark shot from my soldiers now. Um, he can't put them together. If he does, then they'll just die. So that's gonna be frustrating for him. So Onimaru now he's a four five. He's level eight. I gained two levels <laughs> from killing Garth. I spent like five gold on him that turn. It's only all my gold, um, but he's a four five. And when he attacks, he's really a 5-5. Five five. So he can actually kill tech buildings if I can penetrate that patrol zone. Or I can kill heroes. Like and, it's gonna he be... can, and if he can get through and destroy a tech building, he can also still block afterwards. True, because, because he, he has readiness. Yeah, he doesn't exhaust to attack. Yeah, I'm in a huge, huge position right here. So I do have seven workers, so I'll be getting seven gold. So still pestering haunt. Oh, it looks like he's, yeah. He's deciding, yeah. Mixing up his patrol zone. Yeah, he's got to split him up, though, because the spark shot's going to do way too much work. All right, so, yeah, he draws his new hand, and Garth will come back next turn, so. All right, I think I think my opening build for this was, like, a couple over-eager cadets. I'm still shuffling around my tech options. I remember losing to clan a little bit earlier in the day. And making an adjustment that helped me out a lot in this game. Is this the the free speech adjustment? Okay, yeah. <laughs> and, and so this is a Overeager Cadet, which is a really exciting Tech One card. It's it's in peace. It's in Onimaru's line. It's a zero cost two two. So I spend zero gold to play all those units. Then I play a card called Manufactured Truth, where I turn a one of my Tech Zero or Tech One units into a copy of another. So I play the Overeager Cadet. I turn one of my my, my uh, soldiers into a cadet. And so the cadet has two attack and can kill the squad lead. Right, and then he'll take one damage from it. You'll see the one damage on that die over there. Yeah, it'll it'll, the it'll turn, die. Yep. At the end of the turn, he'll change back, and then he'll only ha he'll have damage equal to his health, and he'll die. Correct. Um, and so then I can I build my tech two, and I go truth. And truth is an illusion based line. Um, Onimaru is going to swing and kill Vandy. He can't gain any levels anymore. He's already maxed out, so he's just going to take two damage for that. He does have readiness. I, th I think I'll flip him back over in a sec, but he should be able to block this turn too. But I have I killed the pestering haunt with one of my soldiers, and the last one. So the last one has to kill the lookout because otherwise you wouldn't have been able to kill the haunt. Oh, that's right. I didn't even see that little guy there. Yes, yeah, so there yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, look, tokens, guys. Need full full on cards. Those yep. skeletons look amazing. So we have the black and blue stretch goals ready um, on the on the Kickstarter. You can see how nice those skeleton tokens look. Very awesome art. I got on a one card to make this play though, but hey, Overeager Cadet's amazing. It's so cheap, zero cost, 
But yeah, Oni should be able to, to block, but yeah. Yeah, I, there we go. Oh, but Oni's, it, it, it doesn't matter. Ready. I don't want him to block. Yeah. So I, I go Oni's tech- a general. He's always ready. Oh, totally. <laughs> so uh, I went Truth as my tech two. Truth is an illusion-based build where uh, you have these really high, like low-cost, high-value units. But illusions have this keyword for blue where they will die if they're targeted by spells at all. Like before the spell resolves, before anything, you just use a target symbol ability on them and they just straight up die. So so we were talking before about Deteriorate, which is a zero cost spell, just gives a unit minus one, minus one. And that will kill any illusion. Any illusion. I still go Truth because there's a unit in Tech 2 Truth that allows me to negate that weakness. It's a character called uh, Machiatus the Whisperer. And he has an ability that makes, makes it so your illusions don't die when they're targeted. So I'm going to try to use those guys and keep my Machiatus safe and overrun him with illusions even though black has a lot of ways to deal with them but i just want to get insane value off of how cheap and and powerful the units are and plus i really enjoy the tech 3 unit for truth so uh, we'll see if i get to tech 3 blue is is much more of a late game color than other colors like other colors like to can can hover around tech 2 a lot and maybe even tech 1 depending on if you're playing red or black sometimes there's some really good early game strats that work with that blue likes to stall out and get to tech 3 and do really obnoxious things with that that's the sort of their their playstyle they're very control oriented um so he goes necromancy tech t- no he goes demonology this game demonology tech 2 yeah this is all about summoning really really big guys and he has to be careful because blue has ways to copy and mirror and steal and and mess with those and if he doesn't play these cards right Quince, the, the, the truth hero, um, can just copy his demons, and now I have really, really big dudes and can overrun his board. So he plays a Bone Collector. Bone Collector, another unit that... So Bone Collector, when he attacks, he makes a 1-1 skeleton, and so continuing with the skeleton strats. Yep. Um, the Pestering Haunt is unstoppable, so he just hits my base for one, just, just softening me up for the end game. It's just a... He doesn't want to lose it, so might as well just do some damage while you can. And that was his only real attack. But Bone Collector is a, a two cost three three. A lot of those in black. Uh, it's a very very valuable unit. And now I think in order to I gotta do some tricks to to penetrate the patrol zone because I gotta get rid of the tech building. Um, oh, I think I make a mistake here that I'll, I'll I'll tell I'll tell future blue players not to make. But it's uh, has to do with lawful search in the technician slot. Yeah, lawful so search. So I play lawful search. This lets me see my. I draw a card. I almost put it in my draw pile. I, I draw a card and then I get to see my opponent's hand or discard. So I can see what's in his hand. This is important when playing cards like Reputable Newsman that let me block out certain options. So he has a, a Doom Grasp, which is that I kill a hero spell, summon skeletons, um, sacrifice the weak, which is we both lose our weakest guy. And luckily, all of them are different cost amounts. Yes, so I so can pick newsman one. Would only, yeah, Newsman would only turn off one of them. So I'm struggling with which one I want to remove, which one I want to get rid of. Because um, I can say Newsman on two, and now he can't play Sacrifice the Week. I do see his Tech 2 Void Blocker, which is a obnoxious blocker. It's uh, three costs. It's a 2-6. But the crappy thing about it is, well, for me anyway... <laughs> is that if I'm going to attack the void blocker, I have to exhaust a second unit. So and, and it does no damage or anything. I just I have to spend two guys to swing at it at all, and it has a ton of health. So I do play newsman on two because I don't want oh four four to block the doom grasp. You know this might have been a mistake. I I'm oh eh no I see Garth is available in the in the command zone. But yeah, we'll we'll see what happens here. But yeah, void blocker definitely one of the best blockers in the game. Yeah, totally. It's in his name. Yep. So those two are gonna swing. So here's what the mistake I made. He gets to draw a card now. I don't get to know what that card is. If I had killed the uh, the technician, the technician and first then played lawful and search. then played lawful search, I'd be able to see what that mystery card was, and it might impact some decisions. So I see that he has the the tech two in his hand. So I have Onimaru kill the tech two building, and that's going to be a dead draw for him. So um, he can't play. So the only unit he'll be able to play is either thieving imp or potentially if he drew a unit off that mystery card. Yeah, which it would be really nice if I knew what that was. Uh, so oh, he's I, not even leaning his hand far enough to, for the camera we don't no. know what it is either. Well, we might see it though we might see it so all i have is the newsman um it's a zero three so it's a decent blocker it's just gonna have four health there and just kind of be impe- impregnable again we keep forgetting that oni should be ready yep but he'll turn he'll turn yeah he's in the backfield it doesn't matter i i plan not to patrol with him anyway so yeah there oh go. there we go all right so what does black do here no, maybe I do. Maybe I'm like, eh. I don't see a way. So, Doom Grasp is uh, is locked out. Is locked out. Yeah. So yeah. I, okay. I put it in resist so that 
I think I mapped it out to where if he has the gold to cast Sacrifice the Weak, like he needs to summon Garth, that's two. Then he needs two gold to play Sacrifice the Weak, but he actually needs, yeah, it, it'll work. That'll be four. Then he won't have the five gold he'll need to Doom Grasp um, Onimaru. And he actually needs to make a unit two to actually sacrifice to, to fulfill the cost for Doom Grasp. So. Yep, so it's kind of like it costs five if you're playing it with Garth because Garth can always pay one to make a unit to immediately to sacrifice. make a skeleton but then I put him in resist so I'm making it cost six of his seven gold to even kill Onimaru but he also can't even cast Doom Grass because I locked it out with the newsman so he has to kill the newsman first so this is this is how blue kind of does this they they don't have counter spells like you expect in in they other games and preemptive counter spells but yeah you have preemptive stuff I killed this tech building I locked out his spell decisions he played Thieving Imp, he gets to discard one of my random cards, or a random card from my hand. Um, I don't show the camera, I guess, what that was, but I saw what it was. But um, Thieving Imp is that demon that's in the technician slot now. It's a 3 cost, 2-2. Two, two. This is going to be a really e efficient card. When when I kill it, it's going to go to the graveyard, and if he keeps on summoning it from graveyard, it, it just keeps on generating card advantage. Plink to the base again. Yep. Pestering Haunt hits base for 3. I should really make a tower. Oh, I, I, I don't see when I bought it, but I bought a surplus. Summon Skeletons. Yeah, he plays his three cost spell because he can. But I, I bought a surplus at some point. I think it's because I went down on cards so far that I needed surplus. Surplus is an add-on building that costs five, and you draw a card every upkeep. Yeah, at the upkeep. So I went down to zero cards that turn, so I have only two in my hand. Well, I know. And since you draw it during your upkeep, as opposed to drawing it during your uh, like draw discard phase, it actually is kind of a boost to your hand cap as well. Yeah, you can get six cards in your hand from that. You can get like seven if you had a technician draw too. Yep. There's there's lots of ways. Um, but I went down to one card, and then I had three. Thieving Imp terminated one. I think I, I grabbed my, 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 my card at some point. I think I, I noticed it, that I only have one and, and should have two. But Onimaru's put in work. He's been he's been a killer all game. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Draw a card, make your worker, and then draw your card, so that way you don't have more options. Yeah, totally. Oh, so, Macchiatus. So there's Macchiatus. He's, uh, yeah, that's my 3-3 three, three for, three, for two or three. I think he's three. He's two. Is he two? Yeah, he's two. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's all my illusions gain plus one, plus one, and they don't die when they are targeted by spells. And then so. you summon Quince, who, uh, when he arrives, he puts a zero one illusion, mirror illusion token into play. And so that mirror illusion token is actually now a one, two. Yep. And it's also just a tech card because we don't have tokens yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Quince is a pretty simple hero. Um, he never really does a lot. Oh, I arrest the Thieving Imp. So Thieving Imp is disabled, so it not only is exhausted, but it won't ready during its next up during its owner's next upkeep. Yep. Yeah, so I, I, it's kind of like Blue's kill spell. It only targets patrollers, but you know, does what it can. So he's gonna uh, Onimaru is gonna attack the skeleton for one. I don't have a way to actually hit the other skeleton, so I can't really do a lot here on this turn. And Newsman has no attack, so I can't actually swing. I have to block with Masiatis, which I don't really like. Um, my, my board position is not that great. I don't have enough cards to really do a lot. Um, so, yeah, that, that mirror token, um, Quince has an ability at his midman. So Quince levels up to five. Um, at, when he gets to three, I can do this thing where I pay two gold to turn one of my mirror illusions into a copy of a tech uh, zero, one, or two unit. So I can utilize, with Quince, I can utilize my opponent's board to make some sick plays. So if your opponent plays something really amazing, you can take your uh, you can take your mirror illusion token and transform it into their thing. Yep, and then crash it into their thing, and it acts like blue's removal in in a way. Um, it can be really dangerous to play hasted units against blue for this reason because you like I can't use the illusion that I just put into play and copy a thing and then immediately swing with it unless that thing has haste. So be very very careful um, playing hasted things against blue because they might just take them from you and immediately swing so if if black plays black is playing demonology so if he plays a big guy right now and that that token in the backfield survives i am surely going to turn it into his thing and then try to crash it so unfortunately i have to patrol my my macchiatis and my quince because i just don't have enough blockers and i don't want onimaru to die just yet um maybe i should have blocked with newsman I know his Doom Grasp went to uh, the discard pile, so it might have been beneficial for me to block with that zero four newsman. Uh, zero three. It would be it would be four in the, the in squad. The squad lead. lead. Yeah. So on the board, he doesn't have much attack, right? He just has the. Uh, so he the has Hans and the the Garth, and that's yeah, about... he has Garth who only has one attack. He has Pestering Haunt who only has one attack. And even at max, Garth still doesn't have an amazing amount of attack. I think it's three. Yeah, it's like three. 
as opposed to Onimaru, which is more of a bruiser hero. So th in this game, there are heroes that are primarily spellcasters, and they don't have great stats, but their spells are amazing. And then Onimaru is a really, really strong hero that just hits really hard, and as a result, I mean, his spells are good too, but as a result, they're, um, they're not. So max level of, oh. Oh, misplay there, yeah, that's right, he can't do that. So Garth's max ability is very strong. It's, you can put... A unit from your discard into play if it costs five or less and if you meet the tech requirements for it. So he can put a five or less cost uh, tech two yeah. uh, demonology unit into play for free with Max Vanguard. And because you tech during your opponent's turn and it actually goes into your discard at the beginning of your turn, Basically, he can tech any card he wants, put it in the discard, exactly. max out Garth, and then just immediately put that into play. Exactly. It's super dangerous ability, and you have to always be conscious of it. So because he's Demonology, he puts this Black Hand Dozer in, and that's a 4 gold, 7, 6 with overpower. And it has a caveat, though. When it dies, he has to sacrifice an, a, a unit. Um, also, I believe um, he can't lower your base to less than 6. Correct. Yeah. Or the, the player can't, right? Yeah, and so uh, you can't you, win with it. You can't. You can't actually win the game while Black Hand Dozer is still alive. Yeah, that's the uh, demonology has some caveats. All right, so he plays a deteriorate. No, not yet. He he uses Garth and Pestering Haunt to kill Masiatis. That's four attack. And then he casts a uh, deteriorate on the mirror in the back. Oh no! I think he did. Garth oh. deteriorate to kill. Um, Garth deteriorate to kill Masiatis and, and then only the, take two damage, and then the pestering, pestering haunt kills the, the illusion. Mirror. Yeah, yeah, and the mirror loses its one two status because Masiatis dies. Yep, and then he plays summon skeletons and summons a skeleton for one gold, filling up his patrol zone with little one ones. So my advantage is starting to seep away, um, because I don't have an illusion in play. I can't copy that dozer just yet. You do have Quince in play still. I do have Quince, but I'm not going to be able to copy the dozer this turn. Okay, sacrifice the weak happens. It's a two gold thing. He, we sacrifice our weakest guy. For him, it's just a skeleton. And I lose that newsman. So now um, I don't have the option, or, or he has the option to play Doom Grasp now. I think he's running out of gold, though. He, uh, he Yeah, he has one gold left. Uh, did he lose two skeletons for no reason? No, I think he's fine. Okay. He, he, uh, he hmm, I forget what happened there. Okay. Maybe he did. <laughs> Let's look at that one again. But he made a worker with his last gold. I think I think it might have been that he couldn't afford the last skeleton, so he pulled it back and then made a worker instead. That makes sense. Okay, so now my board is just heroes and a lot of gold, and my card draw is not strong. Um, Black Hand Dozer is going to oppress me pretty greatly. I'm going to play Lawful Search again. Um, yeah, I think... pay one to cycle a card is good. And yeah, you, oh yeah, you draw a card with that too. So, oh goodness, we got a Dozer, two Void Blockers, and a Bone Collector. I need to kill the Tech 2 building. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that this turn. But I do play Eyes of the Chancellor, which is one of my favorite cards. It's a upgrade, and Black has no way of dealing with upgrades. But it itself is a detector, so if he plays anything that's invisible, I can just see it. it he just has no way to use invisibility anymore. And also, your opponents play with their hands revealed, and yep. so you're going to get to see... Uh... Yeah, I will always know what's in his hand. And for yeah. Blue, that's amazing because I have so many ways to preemptively lock out his options. So now I just know that I need to kill the Tech 2 building this turn. If I can accomplish that, then really good things happen for me. And my goal is to just lock out whatever he has in his hand and press an advantage that way. It also has an ability that lets me exhaust the Eyes of the Chancellor to make one of my units invisible. And that would allow me to surgical strike certain things. And that's a part of it, is if I know that his one hero um, needs that, to cast a spell. Does its ability work on heroes? No, but it works on my guy. So I can use it on a unit, and then if I see that he has like an ultimate spell or something, yeah, I will, you, I'll run... Uh... Yeah, yeah, but you have nothing in play to... I can't even use the ability, yeah. Yeah, you can't use the ability to get through okay, and destroy so I, the tech I, I play a starting deck card, uh, Porkhand Magistrate. It's got it's a 2-3 two, 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 right now um, for 3, and it has an ability that lets it disable a unit or hero. That's going to be one of my ways that I stop the Black Hand Dozer. It's expensive. I pay 1 gold, and my opponent draws a card. So very expensive. Uh, very expensive, but I can disable that Black Hand Dozer, or I can disable a hero if I need to, but the Dozer is really the thing I need to worry about. And then for two gold each, Quince can summon more illusions. So that's what that Peace and Law tech tech cards are in the center there. More zero one illusion tokens. So some zero ones I'm just trying to block up, and if they survive, then I can start to copy his things with that. So Onimaru, though, I know he's going to die, and I know that his hero can't gain any more levels this turn, so I just swing Onimaru into the Dozer and say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal five to him leaving him at exactly two health so that if the dozer attacks my squad lead 
uh, O'Rieger Cadet, which is a zero cost two two. It's You'll at least to gonna die, and that that was what I really wanted to do there. So now the dozer isn't just gonna roll all over my whole group. Still for free. playing out your entire hand, only drawing two. You have the surplus, but it's still yep, low surplus, hand time. Surplus is helping though. It's helping a lot. I'm at ten workers now, so I believe I'm done teching cards. Especially if I if I keep on teching cards, it's gonna make my my deck even larger. And a large deck is really bad when you're only drawing two, three cards a turn. You got to get to your tech options quick. All right, so black looks like even with the early explosive start from blue, black is starting to inch to inch back into this. And black has a handful of tech twos and a tech two building. Yes, and I know that he has that stuff, so I know that really big guys are coming out. Yeah, so we're probably going to see double void blocker, most likely. Yeah, I, I think he plays another dozer though. I I think I would. Yeah, because Do Dozer, that Dozer can overpower uh, past the uh, cadet over to the magistrate. Yes, and kill both. Yep. Another play that I think he's going to start doing too, here we go, is he's going to attack with the Thieving Imp and the uh, Pestering Haunt to kill the Overgear Cadet. And the reason why is because he wants the Imp to go to the graveyard. Because the the imp and that goes when right there. When it arrives, there. it forces you to discard a card. At yeah, random. yeah. So when he play every time he does this, he's gonna force me to keep discarding cards. If I'm already at three card hand size, then that's just devastating my options for the rest of the game. I have to make sure that I get more card draw somehow. Blue has some ways. They got some guys that have things like arrives, draw a card, and th there's their stuff you can do. Um, but. It's yeah, it's gonna just really affect me from this point on. Yeah, there we go. Pays three for the thieving imp and forces a discard. Yep, so I'm gonna let him choose again. A little old maid style here. I should have flashed the camera the card that got stolen. Yeah, look at how it changes decision. <laughs> so nope, oh, poker cam, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But it looks like I'm holding a free speech. Yeah, you still have free speech. That's what I really wanted to keep, so it's good. So with the graveyard, he can only exhaust it to bring out one of his guys per turn, so the haunt is going to stay there. Um, but he's going to attack and kill the mirror, which is very important, because if he doesn't do that... Then you can copy the I'm going to copy dozer. that dozer, and I'm going to just go nuts on his on his uh, everything. Yeah, double void blocker. There we go. So now... Now he's he's got patrollers for days, um, although it doesn't protect him from... Uh, Eyes of the Chancellor making an attacker invisible. Right. I'm trying to negate the patrol zone now. I'm trying to find ways around it because I know that the demonology dudes are too big for me to just fight through. Because blue doesn't have a lot of... Uh, doesn't really have a lot of military might. It, it just wants to copy its opponent's stuff. It wants to disable its opponent's stuff with cards like Arrest to just disable them, put them on the back line, and, and take them off patrol. Um, that's really what blue does. It, it controls in a very indirect, oppressive manner. And, and even uh, if you even if you go peace with Onimaru, it's not so much that you have really big units, you have a lot of units. Okay, so I play Free Speech. This is a really good card. It's for Quince. It's one of his spells. It means that I silence Clan Natoy himself. That means he can't cast spells. None of his heroes can cast spells. And all of his heroes lose all their abilities. Yeah, so Garth is no longer summoning skeletons. He's no longer able to like, just do anything with any of his abilities. I make my tech 3 building here. So I summon uh, Machiatus again, and now I put a Spectral Tiger in play in the squad lead. And that's... Um, a 3 cost 5-5, five, five, so yeah. very good cost for stats. Yep, and it's got plus 1, plus 1, so it's really like a 6-7. Yep, and if you can uh, keep him from get, If you can keep uh, Spectral Tiger from getting targeted by something, or you can put out Machiatus to turn off that, uh, that illusion drawback, it's really fantastic. Yes. And I just played free speech, so now he can't even cast spells. So I saw that he has a Doom Grasp in his hand. He's not even going to be able to Doom Grasp Machiatus to then do a thing to the tiger and kill it. So I'm looking okay right now. I, I feel like I might be, be getting out of here. Um, I see that he has a Banefire Golem in his hand, which is a ridiculous 7-7 um, seven, seven for, what is it, for 6? Six? 6. And I'm pretty sure he plays that. Um, it's just a really big guy. I would love to copy that thing. but Yeah, but if he doesn't get through the Spectral Tiger, next turn you can... Uh... Make it invisible and then take out a tech building. Yep, I can do lots of sneaky tricks. So he's going to do the same thing. He's going to run the imp into the tiger, and then he's going to su summon it again with graveyard. So the fact that I wasn't able to kill the graveyard earlier in the game is really hurting me, especially if my hand size is only two. I lose 50% of my options here. Oh, he hasn't replayed it yet, and you're already shuffling I, I know. I know it's happening. You know it's coming. Yeah. So the, the one damage goes to the tiger from the uh, squad lead and the, so the imp. So black hand dozer takes out the tiger? And dies. It's on its last legs anyway. Might as well 
That's a, he got very good value from that black hand dozer. Totally. And he, he cheated it into play with the guard smacks band, so it was even better. So Orpal Glor comes out. It's a disease hero. He He's a 1-3 at the top band, and he deals his damage in the form of minus 1, minus 1 runes. And those are neat because they don't actually go... They don't actually leave when, um, when a, a hero, hero levels. levels. Um, the void blocker will kill Quince and level Orpal to 3. Um, he'll take 1, though. Quince does do 1 damage. Um, but, but yeah, like... When, when a hero levels up, it's going to heal all the damage on it. But the minus one, minus one runes stay. And that's a way to permanently cripple a hero like Onimaru, who is really powerful um, when it comes to combat. So here comes that Banefire Golem. It's a 7-7, seven, seven, and at the upkeep, you can sacrifice a unit. Uh, at the upkeep, you have to sacrifice. Have to. So if you have no other units in play, he sacrifices himself. Oh, okay, yeah. Demonology drawbacks, right? Yep. Although Pestering Haunt, he can always have a zero-cost unit for free. He can't be sacrificed. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Pestering Haunt got, uh, got changed a little bit. So. Yeah, he did. He can't be sacrificed. Okay. But fortunately, uh, Garth can constantly summon skeletons and keep them in the backfield as fodder for the Banefire Golem. So it has to sacrifice a unit, and if it does, everything on my side of the board takes one damage. So my, my tech 3, my tech 2, my tech 1, my surplus, and my base, plus all the units and heroes, like, it just hits all everything. All take one damage. Yeah. Okay, so he actually attacks my Machiatus because, you know... Machiatus. Yep. It's so amazing. Garth trades with Machiatus. Yep. But his board's looking great now. And also, uh, Blue has no heroes in play, and so he's not giving Blue any levels by uh, making that yep. trade. Yep, all I have is my eyes of the chancellor. I can see what's in his hand, but summon skeletons, carry and curse, and sacrifice the weak. So carry and curse is a spell we haven't seen. It's Orpal's disease spell. He looks at my hand, and he gets to uh, uh, remove two non-unit cards. I just saw the... Uh the uh, demonology tech three go into the go into this oh his arm on the obliterator okay yep. just teched it all right so he's almost there then but um yeah so carrion curse is look at opponent's hand and remove two non-unit uh cards from it so discard cards like discard spells and upgrades and whatnot lawful search you can already see his hand and so you use the alternate ability to look at the discard oh he actually didn't he got death rights which is the ultimate ability for uh garth got it got it so I know that's coming now. So blue has knowledge, right? That's they have knowledge and spies and power, and that's how they operate. Um, you you in this game, it's all about countering your opponent, and blue has the superior scouting tools, but weaker units in general. It's, its counters are much more specific. I bring out a Liberty Griffin, right? Who is flying and haste? That's tech three. Yeah, uh, it costs three gold, and it's a five five. That's three gold, but it's flying and haste. The problem is, it's an illusion, so it's very very fragile. I know that Black doesn't have any spells it can cast. Black also doesn't have any Tech 2 units. Yeah. So destroying the Tech 2 may be not so great here. You're yeah, probably... so, so in normal circumstances, I might be like, well, I think I need to kill a Tech 2. But I, because the fact that I can see what's in his hand, I know I don't need to do that. So that's part of the knowledge is power aspect of playing blue. So that Liberty Griffin can take out another thing. It's flying, so nothing's going to hit it back. Um, I can play Reputable Newsman. And I can choose to block one of the cards in his hand, like Sacrifice the Weak. So I think I put a, a, a two, a, a pox on two for Reputable Newsman. Um, and so Liberty Griffin's going to hit his Direct, base yeah. because I'm just like, you know what? I don't have time. I have to just go nuts on the base. His base is sitting at 14. So um, Quince is going to come back into play next turn. And there's some really gnarly shenanigans that I can pull off. So I see the second Void Liberty Bar Griffin in Void my hand Bar right now. Sacrifice to deal one to everything. Yes. Um, fortunately for me, that's not a targeted ability, so it's not going to kill my illusion. So Liberty Griffin will survive one more turn, um, but that damage is going to start stacking up. I don't take damage on the squad leader because it just pops off the armor point, right? And so all my buildings get hurt. I think I don't put a damage on the surplus. That was a mistake, but I don't think it makes a difference as time goes on during the game. Yeah, I forget to, to damage that building too. Um, but how can black come back? It only has spells. It can only attack with the guys that it's got, and I'm just blocking up with whatever I got. I throw all my heroes into, into the patrol zone. Blue's like, haha, sucker, got you to the end game. It's time to close this thing out. No Machiatus, though, so any anything that targets that Liberty Griffin will still take it out. No yeah. illusions on the board, either. Yeah, the Liberty Griffin's final part, it's unattackable, it's untargetable. If it has, if there's another illusion in play that is not Liberty Griffin, so I need more illusions to protect it. If I have more, then it's got, it's just so much more resilient. So this is a desperate all-in for me because I'm just losing control of the board. And uh, as a hint to you guys, 
I only teched one copy of Machiatus, and I think that may have been a mistake this game. It's a legendary unit, meaning I can't play more than one on the board at a time. But having two of them in the deck means that I could draw another one now, and really good things could happen from that. But I'm not able to do that. Yeah, um, ha yeah. spending two on Machiatus over spending two on Big B there like, would have been... Oh, so much better. Yeah. Because it would, it would mean that Liberty Griffin would deal six, and also it will not die if it's targeted by anything. And also, I was a little bit thin on illusions in my deck, period. I didn't get a lot of illusions because I know that black has a lot of ways to terminate them. More skeletons. So, summon skeletons. Um, he can actually cast spells and use abilities this turn because I didn't free speech. And then uses uh, Oracle's midband probably to sacrifice a skeleton to uh, put a minus one, minus one rune on the... Uh... Griffin, and that immediately kills it, yeah. Because yep, it's an illusion, it. so... It's, um, it's the only tech three in the game that is that fragile, but it's also one of the most explosive game ending tech threes as well. It might've been a risk to go for that against black, but I thought I could pull it off with the, uh, the Machiatus to keep it safe, but uh, not so. And, and black also has another way to deal with it. I think he does it later with Vandy's max band ability, which is the hero he hasn't played yet. The demonology hero that's in the command zone still. But, I mean, I'm going to keep drawing into those Griffins, and I'm just going to whittle down his base if he doesn't have any anti-air. And Black doesn't have a lot of air units, notably Zero and Demonology. So, so the only thing in his hand he can play is the Carrion Curse. Yep, because I blocked out Sacrifice the Weak with my Newsman. So he's struggling with what to do. These are tough decisions, because Blue's, Blue's control is, is infuriating. <laughs> so he's going to pay... Five gold to start his tech three building, so I have to worry about Zarim on the Obliterator soon. So what does he do? I think the Banefire Golem can attack. That leaves him with uh, not enough to both uh, carrying Curse and Thieving Imp. So right, so he has to make a decision. I mean, Thieving oh, Imp. Oh, he takes it back. Okay, he needs gold. Yeah, so he's going to yeah play carrying Curse. So look at my hand. This is this is great. I have an arrest. I have a Liberty Griffin, and I have an Overeager Cadet. So so t because you uh, can only discard non-units, makes him. So now I have here's the fifty-fifty. I got an Overeager Cadet, and I have a ca uh, a Tech Three Liberty Griffin. So here's Chris Clan agonizing over the fact that he has to <laughs> make has, you discard a card at random. He has to get lucky. I let him choose. Like here you go, man. Is it the Tech Three? You gotta hit that Tech Three, and he's just. Oh man, here you go. It's all for, it's all you, bro. 50-50s. He's going to roll a die. He doesn't want the decision to be in his hands. Okay. Liberty Griffin uh, still in hand. He gets to keep the tech three. Excellent. So over your cadet goes to the discard pile. The very last card left in hand. Yep. And I'm going to get another card from the surplus. Oh, and the, and the haunt. Uh, haunt. Haunt pings base. Yep. Yeah. Plinks for one again. Yep. Void blocker kills the uh, squad lead. Uh, Bigby dies. It's going to gain some levels for... Orpal there. And I think Onimaru lives, yeah? Maybe not. Maybe the other... No, he's going to live. I think he's okay. Discards one to draw three. Onimaru survives. I still got my Liberty Griffin and my Tech 3 is intact, so I can I can do some stuff. But my hand size is just so bad. He just destroyed two cards oh, that was a, So that was a mistake. The uh, discarded arrest went on top of the deck instead of the discard. Oh, right, so, right, right. Yeah. yeah, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, that gets fixed. So Quince can come back. So here's, a, here's an interesting trick shot for Blue. So I bring Quince out, and then I immediately max him out. His final band says... So when he comes into play, he puts a mirror in play immediately. But his final band um, says when you... Play a non-token or a, a non. What does it say? It, it lets a, it basically when you play a unit, you can pick I one can of your illusions it. and copy it. So one of those tokens now becomes a Liberty Griffin. Yes, and this is where who the has explosive flying and haste, flying and haste, and five five. So I can deal ten to base right now. If I had a little bit more gold, I could. No, I actually can't mirror it. I need no, to draw can't. the two Liberty Griffins. Yeah, because yeah. I could make. You can do a turn where you you play two Liberty Griffins with two mirrors and just immediately do twenty to base. And it stays a Liberty Griffin until either the uh, either the other Liberty Griffin dies or until uh, Quince dies. Yeah. So, oh, so, so instead you're going for Orpal. Yeah. And I look at his hand to see what he's got. I know that he can play Deteriorate. So Deteriorate is still in his hand. And that's going to let him just kill a Illusion. And that, that that's the, the, the death knell for me is the fact that he top decked that Deteriorate. Because I'm going to hit his base for five. And if he doesn't deal with that Liberty Griffin this turn then my illusions are going to come out and hit his base for 15, and that's the end of the game. But that that starting deck card, because the Liberty Griffin is an illusion, 
it's it's still relevant that zero cost minus one minus one if only my newsmen were on zero and you you can't change the uh you can't change him once he's in play once he's in play so if, if my reputable newsman said zero i may have won this game for that reason alone at right at this point so he isn't going to be able to uh let's, let's see what he does here so yeah, that illusion didn't die. I thought it. I thought it was going to, but it doesn't. Uh, it's. Uh, it should at the beginning of this turn when he sacrifices to uh, deal one damage to everything. But yeah, the the mirror will yes. But the uh, the the peace token is is oh, the yeah. other copy of the Liberty Griffin. Yeah, so and, I, and I basically have two Liberty Griffins in play. Yep, yeah, that stays a Liberty Griffin until you either lose the other Liberty Griffin or until you lose Quince. Yes, complexibility. When when you guys see it in in card form, and if we get some overlays at some point, it'll make a lot more sense. Yep. Um, if I had that Masiatis right now, too, it's just so many things I was so close to getting. And if you look at my hand, I saw a Liberty Griffin in there. So I did draw another Griffin. So he's he's got to stop me. If this this is the turn, if he can't succeed and, and lock out Blue's options here, that's the end of the game. So you saw his, his hand earlier. What does he have to work with? He just has a Shrine. He has a Nether Drain, which is an ability that targets heroes and de-levels them and levels his own up. And a uh, the shrine of demonic knowledge is like a it's a thing that makes his his demons unstoppable, which is crazy right now. Yep, unstoppable. His whole board is demons. However, it's unstoppable to units. To units. So Onimaru so is going to block something. He still has to deal with Onimaru. Yeah. Um. So he's going to be able to get to my back line. Killing Quince is going to be a good thing because that's going to. It's going to get rid of the illusion Griffin. Yes. Or get rid of the copy, the mirror Griffin. Yeah, the copy of the mirror Griffin. That that peace token. So that's going to help him get to the end game. The shrine is uh is a is that may have been the thing that wins in the game here because if he can deal with if he can deal with Quince, then I can't win anymore, and the only way it was by using his unstoppable units to get by. So that was like a perfect draw. Um, there's the shrine. There's the shrine. So a unit kills Onimaru, a unit kills Quince. Quince dies. You lose the other mirror, and then he can deteriorate the. Yeah, and then you can deteriorate my, my, my tech 3 dies to a tech 0 spell. For zero cost. For zero cost. Well, he has no deterioration. Yeah, he does have it. Yeah, that's... Yeah. So right. he actually plays Vandy, and Vandy has a max band ability um, that it gives plus 2, plus 2 to its to a unit on his side, and plus 2, plus 2 to a unit on my side, and then they both die at each player's next upkeep. Um, the important thing is that it is a targeted ability, so he can use that to, to kill an illusion. Um, so that, that's, truth is really, really fragile, but I, I thought I would be able to protect the Machiatus to make sure that they don't die to all these black shenanigans. And so Void Blocker takes out Machiatus. Yep. 7-7, seven, seven, main fire seven Mario. is, yeah. uh, unstoppable, kills Quince, also kills the illusion. Yeah, he's going to just completely negate that, that 4-H, the 3-HP newsman. So there goes the illusion, and then now he's going to deteriorate the Liberty Griffin. Oh, he just killed two heroes. Vandy is already max, so I think... He maybe paid gold and he didn't need to. Yeah, I think he just uses the Vandy ability. Yeah. So that, that finishes off the Newsman, Newsman with the Pestering Haunt. Pestering Haunt should probably die, but it's not a big deal. Um, then, yeah, he plays the Deteriorate and kills my Tech 3. And... Oh, he... So Vandy's max, he gives the plus 2, plus 2 to the Thieving Imp. Right. And then the Thieving Imp is now able to kill my Tech 3 building, and I'm going to concede right there um, because I'm holding my Tech 3. It was my only way out of this. Quince is dead. All my heroes are dead. He made it. Um, I show the Tech 3 in my hand. <laughs> I have Machiatis too. No, it was too slow. So I almost, 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 and yeah, I was waiting for that free speech, and uh, it was such a close game. So I really enjoyed this game. Yeah, Liberty Griffin was like the next draw again. The 50-50 discard was amazing yeah so so blue blue started out with a really explosive opening maxing onimaru quickly getting a hero kill it's the gg to clan the toy yeah there's um, the handshake and uh you know black just fought back strong uh made some really great value plays in the mid game and i went for a turbo tech three rush to try to close out the uh, to, to win the base race against these massive demon units um there were a few situations where i almost was able to copy one if i had copied one of those black hand dozers I think I would have just won this game like landslide, being able to remove his big blocker and then just match him on the board with military might and then get that big tech three rush with the hasted flying uh, five attack 
griffins that just end the game so quick and they only cost three that's the cheapest tech three in the entire game it's three and then quince can copy them and it's just, oh man yeah. yeah it's tremendous like truth's end game is fantastic and i i love it um and i i got killed by spells here um but i find that even though illusions have that weakness to spells you can still make it work with macchiatis and if you you can see what their hand options are and use reputable newsmen and free speech you can protect your illusions in a lot of ways and uh it doesn't it, the, the drawback your job is to mitigate that drawback and didn't get uh didn't uh, end up getting to uh, exhaust the eyes of the chancellor just couldn't stick things on the board yeah i couldn't keep a guy on the board long enough to get an invisible unit because if i'd got more guys out i could just invisible a unit past all his guys and hit the base for for any amount and gotten closer to a victory or killed tech buildings or done any kind of thing to counter what he had in his hand so um that was a fantastic game uh black versus blue um clan of toy takes it uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one. So um, we're almost, I think at the time of this Kickstarter, or yeah, this, we're Kickstarter, we're three, 3,000 away from the black and blue tokens. Yes. <laughs> so you won't have to see little little dice little and... dice for skeletons, and the, the soldiers that Onimaru played also have some really great art. If you go to the Kickstarter, you can see that as the next stretch goal. Mirror illusion tokens. Yeah, the mirror tokens, like all kinds of good stuff. Uh, black and blue tokens are, are fantastic. So. And, and I think as of this recording, they're... Three days left? Two days left? It, yeah. Kickstarter's ending super soon, oh, so you guys got to get on it. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so thanks again for watching, guys. We, we want to have more of these videos in the future. And uh, if you live in the SoCal area, uh, hit us up on fantasystrike.com. Talk to Leontes or LK404 and try yeah, to... Yeah, come out and play. Yeah, come out and play. And we'll, we'll try to run some tournaments in the near future, um, long before the game even comes out uh, in November, right? That you're going to be waiting a long time. So let's uh, let, let's get some games in. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's it. So... Stay tuned for some more videos uh, coming up. Try to get a white and purple one in here at some point. That's the final two factions that we haven't showed off yet. And uh, thanks for watching, and have fun playing Codex. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Happy gaming. See ya.